All right, we're going to tackle our first example of a function of two variables and trying to find and then later identify what type of critical points it may have. Now, I picked this as a lead-in example because if we look at it carefully, we might recognize this to be the paraboloid, or as I've nicknamed it, the parabola bowl. Goes down forever, but here's a facsimile of it. Okay, y, x, and z. That has a vertex 10 units up in the z-axis. So we already would know that this is a maximum for this particular function of two variables. So we're going to use the tools provided to try to verify this. So remember the first step for the um, critical points is that we need both the x derivative to be equal to 0 and we need the y derivative to be equal to 0 simultaneously. So this isn't going to be too difficult. The second, uh, sorry, the first derivative with respect to x, that's right, it's negative 2x. And the first derivative with respect to y is negative 2y. And this algebraically isn't super difficult. Um, the key word here is that they both must be equal to 0 at the same time. So from here, we would find out that x is 0 and y is 0. And there really is no other combination to make this so. So this would be then called the critical point at f of 0, 0. Now again, we already know from the graph that this would be a maximum. But now we're going to look into the portion of this problem that would be called identifying or determining what type of critical point it is, maximum, minimum, and then the other is called a saddle point. So I'm going to do a quick little switcheroo here. This is called the second partials derivative test or the second derivative test for a function of x and y. I'm not asking you to memorize these, but it mentions if you have a, an extreme value, max or min, they can only occur at perhaps some endpoint, C calculus one, or at one of our critical points. And you can find this document in our Canvas under Modules in Unit 2. But in our book, you can find it on page 955. So I'm going to pull this away. If you want to do a screen capture, you can try to do that or write down some key things. We're going to focus on the maximum minimum saddle point possibilities and save to later if we ever get to it in this semester, the inconclusive case. Um, mostly because of time constraints, because we've had to make some switches. So I'm going to slide this back. But before I do so, let me just highlight, this is the key calculation. And it's even paraphrased on my typed up formula sheet. Basically, it says, um, if we're going to identify these critical points, we take the second x derivative at the critical point, multiply by the second y derivative at the critical point, and we subtract the mixed derivative, the x and y, at the critical point squared. And then we're either looking to see if this is less than 0, equal to 0, greater than zero. And we're really not going to pay attention to this case right now, um, which is the inconclusive case. We're going to focus on these two. All right. So let's find 
second partial derivatives, we have our first x derivative is negative 2x. So the second x derivative is equal to negative 2 for all x and y values. The second y derivative is also negative 2. And if you start with x and then take the y derivative, you're going to get 0. There are no variables here, so there's no function substitutions that have to take place. They're just constants. It's a second degree polynomial, so second derivatives are just going to be constants. So we'll have negative 2 times negative 2 minus 0 squared. This is going to be the number 4. We're not really as concerned about this number, but we are concerned that it is greater than 0. Let me switch papers again. All right, we've got two possibilities here, greater than zero. So to do the next check, we take the second x derivative and we look at whether it's less than or greater than zero. Well, it turns out that the second x derivative at all points, but especially at ours, is negative two, it's right here. Now I want you to think back to Calc 1. If the second derivative is similar to concavity and the concavity is negative, that meant the curve was bent downwards and that always meant we were at a maximum point. And that's exactly what this test tells us, that f of 0, 0 is where we have a local maximum. And you can also call it a relative maximum. All right, there it is. We found the critical point and we identified it. Game over.